and welcome back to the Radio Mechanic. We uh, were at the flea market this weekend at the Ham Flea Market in Deerfield, New Hampshire, and picked up a couple of Heathkit condenser checkers, as they called them back then. And I did a very brief video. There we go, saying and again. I gotta stop saying that. I did a very brief video on restoring the finish on this Model C3 unit and it came out beautifully and that unit set aside. Then I turned my attention to this C-2 unit. Now when I bought this, both of these units actually were absolutely filthy. It looked like they'd been left in a mud puddle. But both of them had fairly decent finish underneath the dirt. Very, very few blemishes, very few scratches. So I figured they'd clean up nicely. I got the other one at an absolute bargain price, and I tried to get this one at the same price. The guy would not release it. He didn't want to let go of it for the price I offered him. And we haggled back and forth, and I wandered away. And at the end of the day, I came back and talked him down a few more dollars because he was going to have to pack it up and take it home. Had I noticed something, I would have haggled some more. This does not belong in the front panel. And there's no fixing that. Now there's a hole in the panel that doesn't belong there, so I'm going to leave that connector in place. Uh, there's just not much you can do with it. I'm not about to pull the panel off, weld the hole closed, repaint it, re-silk screen it. That would just be silly for something like this. So I'm going to have to live with it, uh, but it has you know, pretty much ruined its resellability, resale value. And I'll just have to live with it such as it is. Anyway, I got this thing back together. It's all recapped. It's got all new uh, resistors. Nobody wants to watch me do that. That's boring as hell and there's a hundred people doing it. What this video is about is the eye tube and as you can see this eye tube is nice and bright and showing up very clearly. Well it wasn't like that when I got it. It was dim to the point where to see it you had to shield it and it just was not usable. And before I went out and ordered another tube, I figured I'd try something. And uh, what I did was I boosted the voltage on the target. Originally, this was running 220 volts approximately on the target. And the target's that metal shield with the phosphors on it. I am now running it at a much higher voltage, somewhere in the order of 400 volts DC. And as you can see, it has brightened it up considerably. Now, I know somebody out there is going to say, oh, you're bombing the thing a lot harder. The electrons are going to burn through the phosphors, blah, blah, blah. Well, it wasn't usable before. Now I'll probably get a couple more years use out of it. And I'm going to show you what I did. If you take a look at the schematic we have up here on the screen right now, over on the upper right-hand side, or excuse me, bleh, I don't know my right from my left. I'm up in the upper left hand side of this schematic you'll see the 1629 i tube pin number four is the target and if you follow that line down to where you see the red x you know the wire coming down from pin four that is the 220 volt tap on that voltage divider consisting of the uh, five resistors you see there in a line what I did is I broke the connection at the red X and I went down, first of all I stepped on one, one more resistor, then I stepped two. And that boosted my voltage up to 400 volts. And as you can see in the video that the uh, tube is good and bright now, it's perfectly usable. Worst case scenario, I could have gone all the way down to the voltage divider and I could have boosted that up to 600 volts. After I did this, I went online, did a, did a little bit of research, and found that people have pushed these as far as 1,000 volts. Now, I don't know if I'd go to that extreme. But if you're trying to get the tube working, you know, it beats buying another eye tube, and these things are getting rarer and rarer every year, and the price is going up and up and up on them. There's still some out there available. But if you can make the one that you have last another four, five, six years of intermittent use as often as you might use this uh, condenser checker. I'm going to call it a condenser checker because that's its official name. It'll probably last a lifetime. The trick with these is keep them out of the sunlight. Don't put them in direct sunlight like an old picture tube. Black and white TV sets had a big problem of fading out if they were in direct sunlight. 
And don't leave it on for extended periods of time if you're not using it. Preserve what's left of the phosphors and it'll probably live as long as you're ever going to want to use any of these. Now we'll take a look at what's on the back of the unit and where I made the modifications. And there's a couple of ways to go about this. There you can see some of my new capacitors, nice shiny orange drops in there. By the way, I had to change every capacitor in here with the exception of this little domino guy. And three resistors. Two of the resistors had gone to nearly double their original value and the third one was nearly triple its original value. So we changed some resistors. At any rate, in the schematic, I'm going to try to do I should probably unplug this while I'm playing with it. All right, the power's off. In the schematic, if we look back here very briefly, we can see that the two capacitors have a common tie point between plus and minus. They're in series. We come back here to the unit, and the common tie point for that was right here on pin number four. That was picking off 220 volts at that point from up here in the voltage divider. And I should also mention, whoever built this thing originally wasn't very skilled. He's got huge, some huge amounts of insulation stripped back. A lot of the wires, and this isn't his fault, the wires are turning green from the ooze that's coming out of the insulation. I initially thought somebody had used acid core solder, and then I realized this green was all over the wires. I've seen this before. Whatever they used for the chemistry in these wires over the years, something oozes out of them and turns green. At any rate, we're off subject. Let's get back. These two capacitors were eventually, uh, yeah, easy for me to say, were originally tied here on pin number four. There's an empty pin here on the tube socket. You could use that for a new tie point. I didn't do that. I soldered the wires, tack soldered them together, put some heat shrink over it, and ran it back to its original point. That way, when the next guy goes in here, it's obvious something's been changed. I try to include my modified schematics when I sell something, but people aren't real good on hanging on to paperwork. At any rate, this wire, which is the original wire that went to pin 4 and also went to the tie point of the caps, now goes to that different tie point on the voltage divider. This yellow wire is a new one that just happened to match the color. I just happened to have a piece of wire that matched. And ties the capacitors to the original point on the, on the voltage divider in the unit. So the correct voltages are present on all the pins. And it's as easy as that. I could have put a little terminal strip back here and tied it to it. I'll probably just put a little dab of hot melt glue and stick the capacitors down and be done with it. Uh, I'm not going to go to great extremes. This is going to be a personal unit I keep laying around here probably because its resale value won't be much. And it's a nice little unit. This particular one has the NE2 indicator on it to indicate leakage. And it's a very quick and dirty test. Anyway, if you have an eye tube that's dim, that's worth thinking about. Worst case scenario, uh, as you can see on the schematic here, the secondary is 520 volts AC. So if you had to really go up to much higher voltage, you could always put a bridge rectifier across that. Of course, now you're going to be pushing well over 1,000 volts, so be mighty careful. Or you could take uh, a single or half-wave rectifier, just a single diode on a cap, and pick off the voltage and put a potentiometer in there as a voltage divider. There's an endless number of ways it can be done. The whole point of this is to show you that these tubes can be brightened up. You can get a lot more life out of them if there's any glow left of them at all. Some of them are so far gone there's absolutely no glow. It's probably pointless. They're probably so far gone that they're never going to come back. But if they're lit up, at least have a green glow on them. Very often you can help them along a little bit by increasing the target voltage. I've talked enough. I'm going away. See ya.